One of the major items on the Fort Worth School Board's agenda this evening, meeting at 7.30 here at the administration building, will deal with the burning of trash and papers and incinerators at each of 117 schools in the Fort Worth district. The city of Fort Worth has criticized the school district for this practice of burning trash and papers because of air pollution. We asked the school superintendent, Julius Trulson, what they intend to do about the practice. We have taken bids. We are taking uh, and will propose to the board that we buy two incinerators to be installed at two of our schools immediately as soon as we can receive the equipment, which is an afterburner sort of thing. In other words, you burn the trash and the smoke that comes from the trash goes to another chamber, which burns that and it leaves virtually no residue, so there's no pollution in the air from this. There are many of these on the market, and of course, they're all fairly new, so we're trying, we're going to buy these two. We think they're good, and if they work out very well, and then we'll include them in all of our schools on a regular rotation basis. You've offered to carry the school district's trash off, haven't they? They've offered to carry it off for $12,000 a month. That'd be four trips, uh, or four to eight trips a month for an average of about $10 a pickup, which we think is a fairly high. Mr. Trulson also mentioned the possibility of the school district purchasing their own trucks and possibly purchasing some land of their own to have their own sanitary landfill if the incinerator machines do not work as expected. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. anything there. Obviously, the presence of armed security forces aboard airplanes on a random basis, but on a, a 
quite frequent basis has deterred a lot of people or discouraged a lot of people from chancing it. How about uh, uh, metal detectors at gates? Are they being very effective in your opinion? Yes. As a matter of fact, we've had several instances recently where we've detected the weapon prior to boarding and as a matter of fact, uh, frequently find that the weapon is also accompanied by shipments of uh, drugs and narcotics things that are illicit. In other words, the association of the two has been quite significant. Are the armed guards going to be a permanent fixture? Oh no, there's never been any intention of keeping them on a permanent basis. This is a gas laser device that produces an intense beam of red light. It works very much like a fluorescent light bulb, except when the electrons of this gas laser fall, they fall in such a pattern that they produce only red light and not the white light that you commonly see. I think if we turn the lights out, we'll be able to see the red light produced by this gas laser. This is also a laser device, but it's of a different nature than the gas laser we showed you. It's a semiconductor laser, as you can see, very small. It was produced at Southern Methodist University, the science department, and with us is Dr. Kenneth Ashley. Dr. Ashley, this device obviously has an advantage over the gas laser in that it's much smaller. Are there others? Well, of course, the, the fact that it is much smaller is uh, its principal advantage because uh, in the implementation of these devices, you would possibly want to incorporate uh, a large number of these in one application. So ob obviously, it would be prohibitive in the case of the more conventional laser that we were looking at. Now, this conventional laser, as you put it, the gas laser, which is uh, of some size and, and requires uh, quite a bit of maintenance and, and operation costs, I would imagine. This apparently does not. It seems to be complete unto itself, except the two wires must go somewhere. What kind of system That's would this right. be? That's right. The laser itself is it's very simple. It's uh, in, a lot of, in a lot of ways identical to a transistor. It has the same simplicity. And as you know, transistors uh, initially cost liter uh, literally hundreds of dollars and eventually cost... Uh, say a few cents a piece and the same thing will uh, inevitably uh, be true for these lasers. Well you may not see one tomorrow in the store and you may not see one in the next airplane you ride but there's a very big chance that lasers are going to play a big part in your life in the future. This is Gene Thomas, Channel 8 News on the move at SMU. There was developed a, a physical per, a performance stress lab, which combines a series of stations which are circuits in nature, in that you participate in a circulatory respiratory activity, and then you move into a strength activity, then to a cardiorespiratory strength, cardiorespiratory strength for 14 stations. And what we thought is if we could incorporate this in a junior college or a college or even a high school, Think of the use of this in the preventive health program. And we found great receptiveness uh, on the part of uh, the Dallas County Junior College District. 
They're planning to go ahead with these labs at both the Mountain View and Eastfield Colleges. And uh, we've just come from a meeting with representatives of the uh, uh, County Medical Association who are enthusiastic about the possibilities of this in helping doctors carry out a reasonable exercise program under good leadership, which of course is the physical education. Well, you can't hardly make a game any more crucial than a St. Louis game is. We're one game behind St. Louis, and uh, uh, if they're successful in beating us, then we'd be two down with, I think, five to go, and this would be a very difficult thing to overcome. So this is a very crucial game for us, and it's, uh, it's crucial for them, although when they leave, if we beat them, they'll still be tied for first place. So naturally, it's not as crucial for them. Coach, you said after the Kansas City game, you could tell the week before that they would play a good game. What's the attitude of the players as of now? Well, I think our players know exactly what's facing us. Uh, no use uh, kidding ourselves. We know exactly what we got to do Monday night, and we're getting ready to do it. And uh, we're playing an excellent football team. I think this St. Louis club is as good as I've ever seen them right now. They're playing a great football. They've scored 75 points and to nothing in the last two ball games. You can't hardly do much better than that. I think the big improvement of St. Louis this year is, is in their defensive play. Uh, they were able to trade for Miller Farr from Houston, and it solidified their cornerback position with fellows like Wilson and Stovall. They're just playing excellent defense. Uh, true, the Lane Edwards uh, tandem back there at the backfield are two big bulls. They can run the football very well. They're averaging five yards plus carrying the football. So uh, we have some problems uh, in stopping them and are moving against them. And uh, they could be one of the big ones, the, the two big backs. Will there be any change in your starting lineup? Uh, the only change that we'll have, Walt Garrison, who played very well against New York, will move back into the fullback spot.